Hello and welcome to Question Time. I'm Benga Ashiru. The federal government recently awarded an 8.6 trillion naira appropriation bill for 2018 budget. The proposed budget is the highest in Nigeria's history with over 1 trillion naira higher than the 2017 budget. Will this budget address the huge infrastructural gap, acute unemployment, and lift the nation out of the economic doldrums? To send us a comment on our social media platforms. The public is still at loss with the reputation of key projects like Mambila Power Project, Second Niger Bridge, and some road constructions time and again in the annual budget. It becomes more worrisome when you consider the fact that most of these projects come under the concession plan. Why is the details of this counterpart funding agreement not made transparent? Our guest on this episode is the Minister of State for Budget, Zainab Hakmed. Join us on this show. The um, 2018 budget of consolidation is designed to continue the reflationary uh, approach of the government of Nigeria that has been undertaken with the 2016 budget as well as the 2017 budget. It's one of the means that we adopted to pull the economy out of recession is to spend in the uh, infrastructure sector to spend specifically in areas where there is a large potential to create jobs. And uh, this has worked because it has helped us to come out of recession during the second quarter of, uh, of this year. From the data emanating from the proposed budget, we have a situation where the capital expenditure is far less than the recurrent expenditure. Uh, we have a capital expenditure of 2.4 trillion Naira and a recurrent expenditure, which is essentially overhead costs and salaries of 3.4 trillion naira. There is a wide margin between this, and experts are not comfortable that are we just spending and not actually investing on key infrastructure? Well, over years we have been spending uh, more and investing less, and what we've done since we um, started working is to increase the investment uh, in the form of increasing the capital spend. The 2015 budget, for example, had a capital spend of 15% of the budget. We took that up to 30% in 2016, uh, also in 2017. And this year's budget, the capital spend is also 30.8 uh, 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 trillion, 30% uh, of the budget. Our aspiration is that over time we should be increasing the capital spend up to the point when where we have equal spending or even more because that's the only way we can have uh, growth that is sustainable as, as a country. Uh, when you talk of um, a higher recurrent expenditure, that indicates that we're spending more in terms of overhead cost and worker salary. But over time, the ministers have uh, rolled out um, ghost workers, and, and this reduction, we, we are not, it's not been reflected in the proposed budget. So what's happening? Well, um, the, the fact is our salaries and pensions is uh, up to 70% of the current budget, which is... Um, I agree with you, not sustainable, but we also made a commitment that despite the fact that there is a large number of workforce that considering the economic hardships in the country that there will be no job uh, losses. So we um, agreed to maintain the, the, the size of the workforce as it is, but concentrated on cleaning out the payroll, so that the workers that we're paying are only workers that exist in the payroll. And in the process, some ghost workers were weeded out of the, of the payroll. But we also found a situation whereby staff were being owed uh, promotion arrears and um, other claims that are the right of staff were being owed. And in 2018 budget, we decided to address this headlong and bring this uh, provision for this 
arrears uh, and and start paying them. Also, there was uh, there there is still a lot of pension arrears, and a lot of effort is being made to make provisions for these pension areas and also to pay them. So these are obligations that government, which is a continuum, um, has uh, built up over time and we're trying to address them. Now, let's look at the, the role of appropriation now in relation to the input from the NAS. It appears the process of appropriation gives the National Assembly enormous powers to have field day that um, the preliminary process of preparing the budget by the executive appears so cosmetic compared to the final analysis and the cost-benefit analysis of regarding the National Assembly input. No, 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 Mr. Aishira, I don't believe that the role of the executive is cosmetic. The, the responsibility of um, um, preparing budgets for the nation is dual. The executive has a responsibility to prepare the budgets and the legislature has a responsibility to review what has been submitted by the executives and they also have the authority to make improvements and then pass it into law. And even the passing of uh, the budget into law is a dual responsibility. The, uh, the um, legislator passes the budget and then the president has to assent to the budget. So it's dual. There is no... Um, uh, again saying that one party needs the other. 